Hello, welcome to the Friday, April 29th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I had some time today, so I summarized some of the traffic that we have been seeing for our SMB and RPC Windows Honeypot. What we did here was that some of the honeypots that we have deployed around the internet, we basically just redirected port 445 traffic to this system. This gives us only one system that we really have to maintain here, and that's actually fully vulnerable to the RPC vulnerability that Microsoft patched a couple of weeks ago. And it does give us a pretty good cross-section. So we get basic data from a lot of IP addresses by only having to maintain one individual vulnerable system. System. Well, first, what we not see, and that's an exploit for CVE 2022-26809. That's the RPC vulnerability that Microsoft patched in April. Instead, we did see an awful lot of brute forcing, of course, and then also quite a bit of eternal blue. That vulnerability uh, going back to 2017 now is uh, still uh, quite popular and apparently there are still some vulnerable systems out there. I would be surprised if they aren't already compromised, but uh, well, uh, maybe the attackers here are hoping for new systems to come online or to be able to recompromise some already compromised systems. And when you're running a database on premise, then privilege escalation is a problem, but usually not sort of at the top of the things that you worry about. However, things change if this database is running in the cloud and that's what happened to Azure. Microsoft is offering an Azure database for Postgres flexible server and the WIS security team, I think I should call them the Azure security team based on all the vulnerabilities they have discovered in Azure over the last year or so. They discovered two vulnerabilities here. First one was a privilege escalation vulnerability that allowed them to basically become the super user on that database. And with that, they were then able to execute code on the server, which they then escalated to be able to read data from other tenants' databases by exploiting a weak regular expression, or I should say a faulty regular expression that was used to verify certificates. Microsoft, of course, already fixed the problem, so nothing you have to do in case you are using uh, this particular feature. And also they went through their logs and apparently didn't see any indication that the vulnerability was exploited. I just hope that other cloud providers have similar capable clients as Azure to find these type of vulnerabilities. Because after all, hiring teams to do this is pretty expensive and probably not an option. And GitHub did publish another update regarding the incident where uh, tokens, OAuth tokens uh, issued to Travis CI and Heroku were used in order to gain read access uh, to private repositories. Well, as far as GitHub is concerned, according to this, uh, they are notifying customers, but there is really sort of nothing wrong on their end. They also link to blog posts by Travis CI and by Heroku. Now, Heroku uh, does state that they're still investigating. They're also asking customers to share any relevant logs with them because Heroku doesn't have any access to like GitHub logs from customers. And according to the latest blog from Travis CI, which actually goes back to April 18th. They're stating that the OAuth key was used to integrate the Heroku and the Travis CI application and that they believe it was leaked via Heroku, not Travis CI. 
As a user of Travis Yain, Heroku, you definitely uh, should uh, be uh, investigating and uh, should be checking if you're affected by this. GitHub is notifying affected customers, so make sure that you don't delete that email, but uh, follow up with it and definitely renew your OAuth tokens just in case. I think it was a week or two ago that I talked about uh, vulnerability in the open source implementation of Netatalk. Uh, Netatalk is an older protocol, used to be developed uh, by Apple and used by Macs. It's no longer really used, but well, a lot of these uh, Linux-based uh, network storage devices are still including an implementation for it, and that may be vulnerable. QNAP Synology, they came forward with updates that fix this problem but you should definitely check uh, your Linux based appliance to make sure that this protocol is disabled. I wouldn't just patch it, definitely patch but also disable it. There's probably uh, highly unlikely that you are going to need a Netatalk enabled these days. Well, that's it for today. If you like this podcast, please share it and please leave a good review with whatever podcast platform you're using to help others finding it as well. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.